Red Bandana. We'll talk more about that as we go through this weekend as Boston College Baseball honors Wells' memory. So here is Farinelli, and his first pitch home is in for his strike. And we get underway at 1.07, our first pitch time against Max Williams. 275 this year and 868 OPS for Williams. Two doubles, three triples, three homers, 11 batted in. And he sprays it foul quickly, nothing in two from Farinelli. Yeah, and this is important. Get ahead of batters early in the game. Don't get that pitch count up. See if he could put the first batter away early. Off to a good start for BC here. Again, this is a Florida State offense, as we talked about, that scores a ton of runs, that's a ton of hits, one of the best in the country. It's a changeup that just missed down, so a ball and two strikes. We are expecting some intermittent rain here or there in the forecast. But the biggest thing is kind of the cold over the course of this game. That is Williams, who lines one down the left field side, and that is a foul ball. Coach Jarrett's right. I mean, if you want to play at the next level, I mean, think about some of these places, right? New York, Boston, up here, Minnesota. So many teams are going to have to get used to the cold, but a little bit of a home field advantage for sure. That feels like 36. I think it feels a little colder when that wind really gets whipping around today. But watch that out to left field today, Eric. One, two missed outside. Two balls and two strikes. And obviously, the benefit of the turf is even though there was some snow throughout the area north of the city yesterday, on we go to play this game here today. First of three this weekend between Boston College and Florida State. 2-2 two -two from Farinelli, and he missed it outside, so three balls and two strikes. As the count to Max Williams, the center fielder. A lot of left-handed hitters in this Florida State order. Williams, Tibbs, Cantu, West, and then the switch hitting for Rowe. 3-2 to left. Magpock towards the line, and there's one away. It was a battle, the first at bat of the day is a big time battle. Winner goes to BC there as that is hit on a pretty good line to left, but able to make the play out there is Magpac. What a way as we see the always dangerous Cam Smith step up to the plate, those numbers, 424. And Eric, every time he puts the ball in play, he's hitting it hard somewhere and he could go the other way, he can stick with it to left. Incredible to watch. And that is strike one from Farinelli. Now Smith, who comes in fourth nationally in hits. He is top 30 in the country in batting average. 424. Pass ball up and away, a ball and a strike. Eight homer, seven doubles, 11 walks. Gets on a lot of different ways. 28 ribbies, scored 37 runs. Big jump from last year where he hit 258 for the Seminoles. But really the jump that stands out is his power numbers. Last year, just one home run over his final 17 games. But so far this year, eight homers, seven doubles, slugging 686. That's rolled over, foul. So two and two home on Smith. Obviously gets the benefit of Tibbs right behind him in the order. Talked about the start for Farinelli here, and he's got Smith at 2-2. Let's see what he goes to here. Smith is very tough to strike out, just 24 strikeouts, and that was 118 ABs. Swing and a miss, went to the changeup. And a good start for Farinelli, two away in the first. Good looking pitch as Smith swings through it. We'll take a second look here. 100% right, left it over the plate though. Little dangerous there, but with that change up, took a little off and Smith out ahead of it. In there for strike three. We talked about the start and there's two away, but here comes Tibbs. You're really never out of trouble with this lineup. And you said, speaking of hard to strike out, that's the story here for James Tibbs. Rolled over on the first pitch, in the shift. McNulty, the shortstop, a long way to go. It's not in time. He had to go a long way to get that ball, using his momentum, and then just tried to shovel, and perhaps just lopped it a touch too much, and Tibbs beats it for an infield hit. Yeah, take a second look here. Eric, you made mention of the turf, and this is one that skied so high off the bounce that by the time McNulty gets over to it, no chance really at first. Tibbs is moving down the line, and you set it a little more on that flip. He's probably out, and ooh, that was mighty close there at first, Eric. 
So the Eagles elect not to challenge this early in the game, and Jaime Ferrer, the left fielder, will bat. So Tibbs on first base, with two down in the first inning. And Ferrer takes a ball just below the knees. Tips is five for five stealing bases this year. That one just missed. And again, we talked about it, right? There's no time you're out of trouble. 327 now steps up, 25 ribbies, nine homers. So this lineup up and down for Florida State. Big reason why they're 24 and four. They can hit the ball all over the field. And we talked about it. they were 19 and 0. And then that Clemson game that really hurt them was that grand slam where they gave it up late, end up losing that one 9 8 on the back end of a doubleheader. No swing from Ferrer. Yeah, they ended up getting swept by Clemson. First three losses of the season all in a row, with Clemson the only team ranked ahead of Florida State in the RPI at the moment. Ferrer putting together his third really good year in a row here for FSU. He fouls this one off down the right field side. Long run for Samini, but he gets there. So just into foul ground, Vince Samini. Runs it down. For all 40 and two thirds innings for the sophomore. Less than one on his whip. 60 strikeouts to just nine walks. And he throws strike one. A hard throwing lefty. That is a tough task. And he can get ahead of you and make you pay here. You saw those numbers. Not much more to talk about when he does that. All the talking's done. 94 miles an hour on the fastball, and Roach fouls it back. Patrick's been really good here recently. His numbers as a leadoff hitter, over 400 this year. 19 runs, 19 RBIs, 10 extra base hits. 93 mile an hour fastball missed inside. So a ball and two strikes here on Roach. Yeah, it's no secret why he's staying at the leadoff spot and why not any way you can get on, that is a good way as a leadoff hitter to get things rolling. That one missed high. One thing that's interesting about this weekend series is that Florida State is about as heavily left-handed a staff as you will see across college baseball, not just Arnold, but a bunch of their key arms out of the bullpen. And the Eagles really only have Leary and Carraher as left-handed hitters, Magpock the switch hitter. Yeah, as a righty, you don't mind that when you're up to the plate. For a lefty, it is so hard when you're going up against another left hand. Roach is behind that one. So first strike out of the game for Arnold. And one away for Leary. We talked about a good start defensively for BC, what they got, but offensively, you don't want Arnold to get into a rhythm. He's already got a strikeout now, but I mean, this is a guy who all season long has been in control, been in command, and He's off to that start here again today. Even in the cold, he doesn't mind it. Cam Leary takes strike one. Leary, who has reached base in every game this year. 344 average, as we talked about off the top. Eight doubles, nine homers. The one that stands out is the walks. 37 of them this year at the top of the ACC. Big reason why he has those 17 stolen bases, right? He's on base all the time. Stole 18 bases prior. Whoa. All the way to the backstop. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Arnold gave a peek at his hand there. That's one of those ones where you think the cold might have got a little well, bit it to it's him. It's going to be a tough day to grip the ball. As we said, it's not wet so far, but it is cold. Here's the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Went up and in in the fastball at 93. Good start for Arnold. Two up, two down, two strikeouts. You have, to Kyle Wolf. you have to remind yourself, Eric, this is a sophomore. This much command, this much control. I mean, that's a great pitch, high and tight. What are you going to do with that if you hit it right? Maybe bump it down the first baseline. That's all you can do with that pitch if you can even touch it. Unbelievable start for Arnold, which Florida State fans are so used to seeing at this point. This is just expected. Kyle Wolf swings the first pitch. It's out to center. 
Max Williams is underneath. And a one, two, three start for Jamie Arnold. It has not been uh, just a weak non-conference schedule by any means for the Seminoles. No, not at all. And then you have to bounce back, right? Go to Clemson, you beat Florida. And then you went two or three against Louisville. Those are two very impressive wins for Florida State. This down and away to Florida State's designated hitter, Marco Dingis. See his numbers this year, 318 on the average, the sophomore. 27th game of the year, started 25. And that's inside three balls and no strikes. Talked about Farinelli's last out against Georgia Tech. I mean, had very similar numbers against Cal to open the season for him. I mean, he had seven strikeouts in that outing. It's low here with the changeup. So a leadoff walk. And Dinja support at first base for Daniel Cantu. Yeah, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to give free passes to this team. They will make you pay. Now you have more trouble up to the plate. We just keep mentioning it, but Cantu is hitting 330 on the season. Hitting in your six hole, I mean, you want those numbers from your four or five hitter, you're thinking. And you get it up and down the lineup here. We mentioned only one batter in the lineup hitting under 300 for the Seminoles team. And yeah, that's strike one on the inner half to Cantu. Come on, Daniel, here we go. Senior who came in from USF. Back. Bunch of newcomers to this Florida State team this year, as we talked about off the top. Missed the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1977, missing the postseason last year. 26 newcomers in this season, including 13 transfers. Can't do one of them. And that one missed too high, a ball and a strike. Talk about players finding a new gear. Here's another one, right? Hit 271 in his career at USF. I mean, already here in his first year, he's hitting 330 with the Seminoles. I mean, this is a guy who stepped up in the big moments. He knows he's playing against some really good competition. He's had a little bit of a slow patch here recently. No hits in his last five after he started the season hitting 388 before this stretch. Wake the place up. Let's go, 3 2. Okay. 18 walks as well, tied for the most in the starting lineup. It's a good looking change up from Farinelli. That's worked for him so far today. Take a little off it on the outer half of the plate. I really like that pitch. Again, it's one of those pitches again. If you get a touch on it, you're tapping it down the third base line. Commanding the outer half of the zone here. Another check over at first. These were the According to D1 Baseball, the rankings of the transfer classes that came in the ACC this year. Florida State way up there, just behind Wake Forest. Runner goes and stops. The pitch on a hop to second. Samini to short for one turn to first is in time for a double play. So 4-6-3, well turned. And two down at the second inning for Farrell. Very well turned by Samini here. Take a look at this. He's going to take it on his backhand. He's already headed towards second. It's really picture perfect, right? The quick turn on to first. Well done by the Eagles here. Two away in the top half of the second. So now Farrell, the switch hitter, second baseman. At 3.07 on his sophomore year. 13 doubles leading the way for Florida State. Oh, it's fouled off. Well, Boston College in the game on Tuesday against Harvard. Turned four double plays in that game and just turned another. Eagles getting the victory in the semifinal of the baseball bean pot. They'll play Northeastern on Tuesday. It was a wild one on another rainy, cold day here in the Massachusetts area. Wild is one way to describe it, yes. 17-9 final score. Game that featured 25 hits and 11 errors. It's a breaking ball that gets the outside corner. So two balls and two strikes from Farinelli to Farrell. Talked about commanding that outer half, right? That's a breaking ball that 
hits the outer black of the plate and gets the strike. Just off the end of the bat. Three. I got you. No easy at bats for Florida State. These guys fight. Seen a lot of pitches fouled off. Waste them, get rid of them. That's a good pitch for 2 2. Get rid of that. You don't like it. Find your pitch here, 2 2. Let's go, three. To the right side for Wang. And Farinelli, because of the double play, fate. And now almost every sport here at BC having their own red bandana weekend, a special tradition across the athletic program here at Boston College in honor of Wells Crowther. Nick Wang fouls the pitch back, so it's a ball and a strike to Wang, the first baseman hitting in the cleanup spot today. It's Jamie Arnold, one, two, three in the first, and he's way ahead. One ball and two strikes. Another average that skyrocketed this year, hit 233 last season, just under 300 at 297 right now, hitting in the cleanup spot for this Eagles team. Swings and fouls that one off back into the right side. Well, the fastball really stands out for Arnold so far. 93-94 is where we've seen it on the gun so far, and coming from that big outside sweeping three-quarter action is a left-hander. Nice piece of hitting by Wang there. Shortening up with two strikes, and he goes into center field for the Eagles' first hit of the day. Right back where it came from, right? Just high of Arnold out to center field. That is a good piece of hitting. You shorten up the swing a little bit. And go with that pitch. On the outer half, just go with it. Right back where it came from. First base runner of the day for Boston College is on in the bottom of the second. So Vince Samini now, the second baseman. And Vince swings through a fastball at 93. See Cam Smith in on the grass at third, guarding against a potential bunt. Boston College does like to bunt a lot. They bunt as much as anyone in the ACC. Good looking slider, though it was too far inside, so a ball and a strike. That was a good looking slider. I think Arnold wanted that. He was a Cape Cod League All-Star over the summer as well. He said he had a solid first year, but this. Samini right back to Arnold. But his throw was wide to first base. A sure thing double play after a great pick by Arnold, but he just kind of missed the throw back to first. So Wang stays aboard for now after the first out of the inning. Two positives for BC, back-to-back -back hard hit balls, and another positive is that's not a double play ball there, is that throw just a little awry to Cantu off the bag there at first base, and right, those are the mistakes you can't make, right, Eric? Can't ask for much more of two hard hit balls than that, but as you said, Arnold makes the play. Now Adam Magpock, the left fielder. Really nice run here recently for Magpock. And there's been some opportunities in the outfield for Boston College for someone to kind of come in, get a job, and he's done it, making his 12th straight appearance. He's started 10 in a row now, hitting 371 over his last 11 games. Five RBIs and five runs in his last two. And he swings through that one for strike three. Take a look here, this is just, I'm gonna throw one right by you, isn't it? Just off the outer half. It's one that's so hard not to chase. Third strikeout of the day already for Arnold. Finish it up here, let's go. Check over on Wang at first base. So two outs now for Cam Carraher. Another thing with a lefty pitcher, you always have to be alert for that quick pickoff move. Carrer came in as a grad student this year after playing at Southern New Hampshire the last couple of years. We got one, six. At 337 last year. Yeah. That is in for a strike. One more, finish him up, let's go. Four game hit streak coming into today as well, so 
playing good baseball of late. Hit, scored a couple times and drove in a run versus Georgia Tech in their last meeting. Too far out. Great pitch on 0-2 though. Off speed, off the outer half, nearly getting to chase there. Perfect waste pitch. Here's the one, two. Swing and a miss. Went up and in with the fastball, and that's four strikeouts. And thanking him for that one. They get pretty much a day off there. First one is fouled off. It's the Alabama transfer. Spoke about transfers. Here's a good one. So one ball and one strike to Jackson West. Sophomore catcher's kind of been splitting time behind the plate this year for Florida State. Farinelli matching Arnold so far, pitch for pitch. Just inside there with an off-speed one. So two balls and a strike. If you're BC, you're happy and you're upset, right? You hit a couple hard ones, but nothing to show for it, as those are rare to see against Arnold. In the left. Tough play in the win. Magpock a step into foul territory and actually came back across into fair territory and he makes the catch. So one away. Eagles were shifting slightly on West. So you can see where everybody was as that ball has popped up. A lot of times you'll see a shortstop go get that, but no chance for McNulty that far away, obviously. Yeah, that was tailing back into foul territory, as you made mention. That has a lot to do with the wind. And you see how much that picks up. Hats were flying everywhere here on the field. I mean, that 10 mile an hour wind, if that gets a good gust when that ball's up there, that can really sail left or right. Bunt down and it goes foul. As Cal Fisher, the shortstop, first years, making his fourth start of the season. Not a bad idea. No. First base way back down the line there. Try and put that way and beat one out and steal a single almost there. Fourth start in a row here for Fisher. And ooh, that hit him. Yeah, you heard that one up here. That might have got the elbow guard. Probably thankful to be wearing that right now. From Deerfield, Wisconsin, played his High school ball there as we take a look. And yeah, that just ran in. It looked like it got him right on the top of that elbow guard there. That'll flip the order over here. So Max Williams. Sky one to left his first time. To the right side, off the glove of Wang. Comes back to first and does get the out there. So a good job by Nick Wang to stay with it after once it hit off his glove, no chance to potentially turn two. And Farinelli just beats Williams to the back. Take a look here. Rolled over to first and it's knocked down. No chance at second, make the smart play over to first. Great work by Farinelli to find the bag. That's so tough as a pitcher. Find it, looks like it's just in time there to get the out. We do have a runner in scoring position for the first time today, Eric. For a tough guy in Cam Smith, who's hit 390, or excuse me, has hit 397 this year with runners on base. And he's been especially good in these spots with two outs. He's over a 400 hitter with two outs, which I guess technically it's actually below his season batting average, <laughs> but nevertheless. Faradelli looked like he slipped throwing a slider to another. Still a clutch factor though, right? Even if you're hitting 424 on the season, you're hitting over 400 with two outs. That's huge because with two outs, there's no such thing as a productive out anymore. You, you gotta hit the ball, you gotta get on base yourself. We got a check up on Farinelli. He did slip, he did lose his footing on that release. Now Parker Landwehr goes out, just giving him a minute. As we play here in the top of the third inning from Brighton, Florida State and Boston College, first of three this weekend. Eagles, who won the series last year down in Tallahassee, it was one of those 
road weekends that BC had before they even came up north as part of their fantastic start to the year. Put them on a path where they eventually were a number two seed in the Tuscaloosa Regional a year ago. BC's actually won four of the last seven overall against Florida State. Three and nothing here from Farinelli. Smith has 11 walks on the season. Take one here, get first and second with Tibbs coming up. Too far out. So Smith walks. Second walk of the game for Farinelli. So it does put the force back on with two outs, but it brings out one of the best hitters in the country in James Tibbs. And Todd Interdonato will come out to the mound. We'll see Todd Interdonato make a lot of visits, even as the head coach, not in pitching change situations. But the third baseman, Roach, stays home with the force potential at third base, and Tibbs takes outside. You can't have that third baseman leave there, and it can also be an easy steal of third if he's going anywhere. Slider down and in, 2-0. Oh. It's a tough spot here, because you want to be fine, but you can't be too, too fine. Yeah, 2-0 to Tibbs is not where you want to be with first and second. Hitting 459 with runners in scoring position. And he is ahead three balls and no strikes in the count. It's been all off speed or breaking stuff so far to Tibbs. So now you're in a spot where you may have to challenge him. Three balls and no strikes. It is a fastball. Tibbs goes after it, and he bounces out to second. So on 3-0, Farinelli goes to the fastball, and he gets in college back to the plate against Arnold. And here is Parker Landwehr, the catcher. Parker at 213 this year at the plate. 16 hits, four doubles, two homers, 16 batted in. And that is strike one. You see Arnold again getting ahead of batters. He's done so well today at that. And when you're ahead, you're in control. Throw what you want the next pitch. Hey. Two in a row right on the edge, but both called strikes with off-speed stuff. Attacks the outside, then goes high and tight and gets it right at the Eagles' letters. Back to the fastball, and that one missed down. So three breaking balls and one fastball to Landwehr so far. Speed 81 on that. Off speed pitch, Landwehr was way ahead of that. Fouled it into his dugout. Lost some grip on that bat, and that's another thing we'll see. We talk about the pitchers and their grip, right? The batters too on home plate, and Eric, those metal bats when you get it off the end in a cold day like this, it makes you think twice about those outer half pitches. Here's the one, two. And that's too far inside. Ooh, that just missed. So you definitely see Arnold's ability to use both sides of the plate, go up and down the ladder consistently. Back up the middle and through. So second inning in a row, Boston College has put the leadoff man on as Landwehr gets one off the end of the bat. Still pretty good start here, though, for Arnold. Four strikeouts in his first two innings of work. We talked about the put-away pitch. There's off speed, right? There's high and tight with the fastball. So he could beat you a lot of different ways. That's why you're at 0-2, and you're thinking, oh, boy, I could see anything in his arsenal here. And that's what we have seen today, where his 0-2, his put-away pitch, it could be his fastball. It could be the off speed. It could be a changeup. You, you don't know what it's going to be from Arnold. So Sam McNulty now the shortstop. Again, the third baseman Smith is in. 
Gonna guard against it every time. McNulty does get the butt down, back to the mount. Arnold hesitated, and then he throws it into center field. He had time, he had the out at second, but he hesitated at first, and then when he finally threw, it was wide, and no chance for Cal Fisher. And first and second, no one out. And we're gonna have a meeting at the mound here as Mike Capozzi will come out and try to settle things down. He said it, he had time, but there's the little hesitation. He holds up top for a second and then just throws it wide of the target. That's the... Normally bunt here, no matter who is up. Patrick Roach, the leadoff man, squares and gets it down. Arnold feels, looks at third, this time takes the sure out and gets it. So a sacrifice bunt by Patrick Roach and runners on second and third with one out now, and here is Leary. Yeah, Arnold just going the easy route here. It's another bunt right back his way. Coming over to cover, and the throw to first. Now he got second and third, one out. Anything to the outfield could score a run, you're thinking here, so. And you got exactly who you want up, the way he's played. Leary takes the first pitch high. Strikeout in the first. He did swing through one of those fastballs that we spoke of that. Out to left field and deep. Ferrer is back to the track, to the wall, it's gone! Cam Leary with a three-run homer. And Boston College strikes first, it's 3 nothing. Wow. His 10th of the year, and it is a big one here in the bottom of the third. How about that? Go to left center with it. Why not? Look at this swing. Left it over the heart of the plate, and he takes it just to the left of the 375 sign. That is a great pitch of hitting. We just said, who do you want up right now? It is Cam Leary as he goes the other way with that pitch. And now strike one is called. Jamie Arnold had only allowed three earned runs the entire season before that swing by Leary. And Cam hits a three-run homer. So it's 3 nothing Boston College here in the third. And now Kyle Wolf grounds it foul off to the left side. Right, and obviously the two just earned there with the one error, but 100%, what a start for Boston College here. Hit a couple hard last inning that we talked about. One got through, the other right to Arnold. And a little bit of small ball helps out here. This is the second home run allowed by Arnold this season. Wolf to left. And that is a foul ball. Kind of in on the hands, didn't get all of it. I'll take a look back at how it became first and second. Bunt right back to him, and it's hit with enough pace where he has time, but it's that little hesitation, and it's not much, right? But that little hesitation, that throw goes wide. That one missed up and away, so one ball and two strikes. Now, if you're Arnold, you got to zone back in, focus back in here. Got to get through this inning where it's at and hope the Florida State bats can get going. Swing and miss. So strikeout number five is completed at first base. And that's the second out of the inning. It's another case of what we talked about. There's so many different put-away pitches. This is just a fastball on the outside corner. That's all this is. Swings through it, has to make the throw on to first, but the fifth strikeout of the day, and he has gone to that strikeout quite a few times today to put batters away. Comes from so far outside that that fastball just comes in on you so quickly, even more than the 93, 94 miles an hour that it is on the gun. When it's on the outer half, you feel like you're chasing it still with that release point. Miss down, two balls and no strikes to Nick Wang, who singled his first time up today. Yeah, the first hit of the day, back in the second. He was one of those two hard hit balls. The second one was a line out, but again, hit hard right back up the middle. And now ahead 3-0. and oh. 
a strike called on the inner half. Good pitch, 94, belt high, inside corner. Four hitter might get the green light there. So from 3-0 to 3-2. Just attack the same spot you just hit. Right up the elevator shaft and out of play foul. Those last three pitches, Eric, are all inner half, belt high. That one fouled off and just out of play, but good battle back from Arnold here is looking to get out of the inning. Hit hard to short for Cal Fisher, and that does end the inning. But not before Boston College finds the game. And Leary, with that big swing, gives them a chance against the number two team in the RPI. And there is strike one. Yeah, get it done on the road. Now can he get it done at home? That's the big question here. For the Eagles, who are up 3-0 and headed to the fourth. Ferrer out to left field and deep, and that ball climbs over the wall. It's a line drive home run for Jaime Ferrer, his 10th of the season. And Florida State gets one back. Well, there's your answer, Eric. That ball was hit on a line out to left field. Just clears the wall, but this thing was drilled over the heart of the plate. Drives it out to left center, and it just clears the fence, but that's how you respond if you're the Seminoles. You get one right back. And just like that, it's pretty much the top of the fourth starting, just down two now. Swing and a miss now to Marco Dingus, the designated hitter. That ball was crushed out to left field, and just high enough to clear the wall. Quickly though, nothing and two, the count on Dinches. And that actually hit the home plate umpire on the tip. Craig Barron, both head coaches coming out, trainer as well to make sure he's okay. On the bounce, oh boy. Yeah, it went under the mask there on the hop here. Got a better look here as, oh, Ooh, right yeah, that ended up catching him in the chin. Yeah. No chance to get out of the way when those happen either. Changes direction, no chance for the catcher to make a play on it. Appears to be okay, which is the good news. Gives the nod of approval there, but going to be feeling that for quite some time. Yeah. So it's 0-2 the count. Dinges who walked his first time leading off the second from Tallahassee Community College last year in the Florida State this season. And that's blocked by Landwehr. And the waste pitches, we've seen it. And just not chasing, but looking waste pitch, you're 0-2, you're way ahead. See if you can get, we call it a cheap K up here, get him swinging at something that, yeah, no intention to strike finding the zone. Wasted one down and away. Struck out just 11 times on the season, so tough guy to get down on strikes. We mentioned that with a lot of Florida State hitters. To short high hop for McNulty. Wang's got to pick it, and he does. So the first out of the inning is Nick Wang makes the pick. Six to three on the out, and here is Daniel Cantu. It's a tough play all around, because for McNulty, yes, it's on the hop. The hop is nice, but you feel that hop way back in the hole here. Take a look at where McNulty is when he makes this play. He's almost on the outfield grass, long throw over, great pick over at first to get the out on a really close play. It's one of those that, especially on turf, you actually want that throw to be shorter where Sam had it, rather than being a short hop, makes it easier to pick for the first baseman. Cantu fouls it back, nothing and one the count on the 
Florida State first baseman in a 3-1 game. Boston College out to the lead. It's the positives of turf, right? You pretty much know the hops you're going to get, but if you're an infielder, sometimes that ball comes in a little hotter than you expect. Nothing to slow it down. Just outside, one ball and one strike. Cantu grounded into that double play. 4-6-3. Good off-speed pitch. Really good-looking pitch here. This is knee-high, breaking in towards Cantu. Swings right through it. 84 miles an hour. Went back to it. This one's to left field. Magpox started back, but comes in to make the play. So two away in the fourth inning. Farinelli has bounced back well after the home run. Yeah, Magpock made that a little more difficult than it had to be, right? He took a couple steps back, and understandably, that's always your first step is back. That ball looked like it was off the end of the bat, and it just kept dying, but he's able to get under it and make the play two away here, as you mentioned, the fight back after the leadoff homer. And Farrell goes after the first pitch, nips it into the mitt of Lanware. So a Leary home run in the bottom of the third, the three-run homer. And then Ferrer with the solo homer to start the fourth. Has us at three to one. That's too far out. Good attack pitch on the outer half there. Gatto one, little change of speed there after a couple off-speed pitches. Chance for Leary and Magpock again. It is Magpock in left center. And three in a row retired after the home run by Farinelli. I may Ferrer. So three to one our score now is strike one in to Vince Cimini. Yeah, big response. I know you only get one back, but still you get one back most importantly after giving up three in the bottom half of the third. Arnold's worked pretty consistently from ahead in the count today. Way ahead, nothing and two on Samini. One hop to short, diving pick, long throw, Fisher. Not gonna get there. Really good play to knock it down and get to that ball, right? But no chance, he's so deep. Take a look here, moving to his left. Knocks it down, great play to get it. Got there, but the throw from Pretty much the outfield grass there, way back in the hole. That is a long throw across the diamond. No chance at first base. Well, one thing the Eagles are doing is getting the leadoff batter on. That's three innings in a row. And the way that Boston College plays small ball sometimes, you give yourself a chance to manufacture some runs right up the middle here. And reaching play by Fisher. What a play. But the throw to first, not in time. Oh boy, that's a heck of a job by Fisher to get an out at second base. How about the range? First he's going last play to his left. Now he's going back to his right. Knocks that down and makes the play. That's tough in the hole to get there behind second base and they nearly get the double play, just not in time as Magpock flies into first base. Pretty good turn there by Ferro as well to even give them a chance to get the double play. Now Carraher shows bunt, takes strike one over the outside. Cam Carraher struck out in the second. Magpock hops pretty far off first base. And that is strike two. Magpock five for six stealing bases this year. Definitely a guy who could steal a bag on you. Gotta be careful with the lefty who's alert to that now. Eagles as a team, 63 stolen bases this season in 76 attempts. And that's strike three. 
So at number two in the inning on strikeout number six for Jamie Arnold. Take a look at this pitch here. Good looking pitch. Umpire rung him up, so it didn't matter if he swung or not. First looking strikeout of the day here. Good off speed pitch. Belt high in there for the sixth K of the day. And now Parker Landwehr with two outs and a runner on first base in a three to one game here in the home fourth. Parker singled his first time. And that is up the middle and that is through. So Landwehr is two for two. And Adam Magpac goes first to third. Now he's coming home. He surprised everyone, but the throw is still in time. Third on a single. Oh, nice, good. And he tries to go all the way home. Obviously thrown out, but they had the cutoff man looking for a second, and the throw still got yeah, there. He as definitely, he said. The, the goal of trying to surprise him definitely worked, but to Faroe's credit, he did make the play and get the out. So now the Eagles strand a runner there and have an out at the plate. Still have a 3 1 lead, though, as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Farinelli back to work. And he missed outside there. So a ball and a strike to Jackson West, who's the one who just made the play at the plate. There is a line drive into right field, and that is a hit. Well, you make the play at home on one end and a leadoff single to start the inning for West. Well done. Sticking with it to right field, it gets down and leadoff base runner is on for the Seminoles here. Take a look, this pitch is breaking back away, but it stays right over the heart of the plate really and it's just drilled out to right for a single. By the way, just going through that last sequence, Patrick Roach was thrown out of this game. So Aiden Harrington is in at third base. He's the new third baseman for Boston College. So whether it was he argued or he just had gotten too close there, whatever it was, he was indeed tossed from the game. So that's really why the extent of the argument from Todd and Donato less so than the play at the plate. That's why there was that conversation. So Harrington is at third. On we go. Two balls and no strikes to Cal Fisher. A shortstop for Florida State in the nine hole making his fourth start in a row. Oh yeah, we said it. We, we did kind of see the umpire there escort Roach off the field and he was giving him the game here. So here's the 2 0. That missed high. So three balls and no strikes. Fisher had an active last inning, too, didn't he? In the field, made that great diving stop where he moved to his right. Then he's moving to his left, making a fielder's choice. It's second, a really impressive play. See if he can get on here up 3 0. Got the inside corner for strike one. Good pitch on 3-0, right? Fastball knee high. Not much you could do for the freshman batter there. Fisher probably taking that all the way. And then goes to an off-speed pitch, and Fisher swings through it. So it's three balls and two strikes. Fisher was hit by the pitch in his first at bat. Nearly was hit again on that 2-0 pitch. Runner goes and stops, and the pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. That's impressive. That is very impressive from your pitcher there, that fight back. And how about that pitch? Take a little off it. Ankle high, swinging through it. Let's go back one more time just to show you. So you'll see Patrick Roach. So you can see he immediately is coming out. So he is arguing there, and that's why Craig Barron, the home plate umpire, makes the decision that he does. So Roach, again, out of the game. Harrington's now at third base. Williams shows bunt. And he takes up and away one ball and no strikes. I think he was yelling at West, right? So whatever it was, <laughs> Roach is no longer at the top of the order for Boston College. So one and nothing on Williams. 
who is 0 for 2 today at the top of the Florida State order. And he fouls it back off the end of the bat. Yeah, they'd love to get the top of this lineup going here. I got you. 100%. Their first three here. Tibbs the only one with a hit. Smith did reach on a walk, but they'd love to get this group going here. Especially that 2-3 combo of Smith and Tibbs. Another check over the runner. So what Florida State has done so far today. One of those leadoff batters was the home run by Ferrer in the fourth. Good off speed pitch, 79 miles an hour. Got Williams way out in front. Taking a lot off with this pitch. Good looking change up and the drop on it too. It is a little high, it's up in the zone. But again, taking so much off of it. Swinging right, way ahead of it. So one and two from Farinelli. And missed outside. Seen a lot of that from Farinelli. 0-2, oh, 1-2, not afraid to waste one here as the bullpen is up for BC. And that is Evan Moore. He's getting more and more of a roll for Boston College out of the bullpen. So two and two, and obviously a huge spot with Smith Tibbs due up next. Williams swings through it. Change up from Farinelli and back-to-back -back strikeouts with a runner on first. Well done. Look at this pitch. Breaks down, nearly skips off the turf. The top just falls out of it right at the right time. As now it's Smith stepping up to the plate, but two big strikeouts after the leadoff single, and those are non-productive outs, obviously, but you don't even have a way to get the runner to second with one out. So same spot that Smith came up as he fouls it back in the third inning with Fisher on first base and two outs, and there Farinelli walked him and got James Tibbs to ground out. Now again, runner on first, two outs for Cam Smith. Strike out in a walk so far today. 3-1 Boston College leads, top of the fifth inning. Game one of the three-game series from Brighton. That's off the end of the bat foul. And Farinelli's way ahead. 0-2 oh now, the crowd is up here. A lot you can do here with the runner just on first. At least a chance. This is Farinelli's last inning. And trying to get through it with just one allowed. Another check on the runner West. This is not just about Smith, but it's also just about you then force Tibbs to lead off an inning rather than batting with runners on. 0-2. Oh, Off the end of the bat into right center. Cam Smith with a big hit. West goes to third, it's a double for Smith. And now second and third for Florida State with two outs and here comes Tibbs. This is the problem you could get into, right? We talked about that two, three duo. You're up, the count is 0 and two and what does he do? He goes with the pitch the other way into the gap, drives a double to right center field. West stops at third. And Couple runners in scoring position for the always dangerous Tibbs now. Looks like they're gonna leave it to Farinelli here to try and get out of this jam. So now time called as Landwehr is gonna go out the entire infield. So now Tibbs, one for two today. And he takes down low, not a bad spot, but Tibbs laid off. Gotta think they're gonna be extra careful here, right? You said it, that base is open on first. Not that you want to see Ferrer with the bases loaded, but as you mentioned, it is an option. And a 
It's two balls and no strikes. Remember, it was a 3-0 count to Tibbs back in the third inning. And then Tibbs swung at the 3-0 pitch and grounded out. 2-0, that's way inside. And so 3-0 once again. Now, obviously a little bit different here. If you do elect to throw a fastball and challenge him 3-0, he just showed you that he's willing to swing 3-0. See what the choice is. Off the outside, and they're loaded. I was going to say, I think this is take the whole way here. But the option was made anyway with that pitch that missed off the outer half. And can't forget what happened last time. This man was up to the dish. Absolute drilled to left center field. I mean, this is a perfect piece of hitting to left center. And now you're trying to get out of trouble with the bases loaded, and it looks like we will get that change here, Eric. A deal with Jaime Ferrer, who just hit one out of the park his last swing. This swing, though, he missed, and it's nothing in one. Take that is the splitter from Moore, which is the pitch he developed in this past off season that's kind of turned him into a new arm and into spots like this. Grounded foul, and Moore's way ahead, nothing in two. That splitter to start, that's so tough. You see that thing drop at 83 miles an hour and you just swing right over it. Now Moore is way ahead. Nine strikeouts in his last three outings. 0-2. Went back to the splitter, this time for error. Did not bite. Well done by Landwehr too. That was a tough one to block as it Skipped right at the end of the plate there, and backstop's not too far back, but you got to think anything gets past him here, that's a run. West, Smith, Tibbs, the base runners. One, two. Back to the mound. Moore, get, tossed to first. Oh, my, he overthrew it, and it's off the glove of Wang, and the game is tied. The inning was over. Moore hesitated to first. Oh my, it's 3-3 three, three here in the fourth inning. We've seen this today. That's the third throw from a pitcher today that's gotten away. And again, Eric, look at this. He turns, he could have just went home the easy route. Going first is never a bad play, I understand that, but you're already off the home plate, headed that way. And the look around. And Throws it high of the target. So an error on the throw to first base. Two runs score, obviously with two outs, everyone's running on contact. So 3-3 three, three game, two in scoring position, and Marco Dinges, the designated hitter. And the shame of it, of course, for Moore is he made the pitch and he got the out, but obviously just missed on the throw to first base. So now trying to get out of it again, still at 3-3. Three to three. And that one missed inside, two balls and no strikes. So it's Tibbs at third now, and Ferrer is the runner at second. That one missed down, and it's 3-0. and And now you have to fight back after that. Second and third, still two outs, down 3-0 here. And there's a knee-high strike. So a good fastball there to get back into the count. Three one. Line drive over second. Dinges brings in two. And Florida State has flipped this game. It's five three nulls. Two RBI single, you said it. This game has flipped. Good piece of hitting over the head of the second baseman. And a four run top of the fifth. Sees Florida State jump out in front by two. And again, this is the play, the would be third out of the inning and just kind of got caught in between. Do I run and flip it or do I throw and just overthrew it? And then Dinges knocks one into right field. So it's a five to three game. 
And Cantu takes strike one on the inner half. So now it's about getting this last out here and resetting if you're Boston College in what still is a very gettable game down by two. Good pitch from Moore. He swung on a miss with a splitter, and he's way ahead, nothing in two. And yeah, we saw the same thing with Arnold, right? That little hesitation that throws you off, that tiniest, tiniest hesitation. Runner goes, pitches just too high. So Din just takes second base. And now in scoring position, it's one ball and two strikes. Swap struck him out. So Cantu is down on strikes. That ends the inning, but not before Florida State takes advantage. DC, fight back here. Gotta fight back. Bottom of the fifth, plenty of time left in this game. You put up a crooked number and you're right back in this thing. So Jamie Arnold now pitching with the lead, deals with Sam McNulty. And he takes high, one ball and no strikes. McNulty laid down a bunt his first time, and he was the one that the play we were talking about that Arnold threw into center field when trying to throw to second. So he reached officially out of fielder's choice, so 0 for 1. Sam swings through a fastball up and away. Been a really good run here recently for McNulty, who's up to 319 on his season average. That's on the ground to the right side. Inside out swing for Cantu, and he has to take it himself for out number one. You said an inside out swing, pitch jams you on the hands, fight it off and just rolls to first base and all the time in the world for Cantu to get over there. No need for Arnold to come over and cover. He'll take the run over himself. Three unassisted in the book. So top of the order, and remember now, this is Aiden Harrington in the spot of Patrick Roach. So Harrington bats for the first time, and that is one ball and no strikes. So Harrington from down the road here in Millis, Mass, up and away. His first at-bats here of the season, he's appeared in four games, was hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance but does not officially yet have an at-bat. That's off the outside, and it's three and nothing. A little delayed reaction. Everyone was looking around thinking that one did get the outer half, but Harrington will take it way ahead, 3-0 here. As you mentioned, coming in for Roach here in his first at-bat of the day. And that's a strike in the inner half. So it's a five to three Florida State lead. It is five unanswered runs after the Leary homer. And that is a knee high strike. Talk about Arnold so good at getting ahead, but even when he has to fight back from behind, he usually doesn't miss a beat there. How about that? He goes in on the knees, out on the knees. In for strike three. Strikeout number seven for Jamie Arnold. Two away for Leary. Look at this pitch right on the black. I mean, this is perfect. He's fired up as he should be. That is a huge battle back there. You're looking at Leary possibly coming up with the runner on first, and you battle back, and we all know what Leary did in the third. Put one over that left center wall. Off the end of the bat to third base, spinning away from Smith. His throw and the run is in time. One, two, three for Jamie Arnold. And we go to the sixth inning. It is 5 3 through for Rowe. First pitch home is on the ground to second for Vince Samini. So one away here in the sixth inning. Let's take a look at how we got here so far. Cam Leary started it. 
giving Boston College the lead in the third inning. That made it 3-0 on the three-run homer. Ferrer got one back for Florida State to start the fourth. And a 3-1. And Jackson West, who started that fifth inning with a single. Behind nothing and one of the count now to Evan Moore. Good response from Moore to start this inning. Get the ground out early. And look to get in and out of this inning quickly here. Here's the 1-1. And that is in for a strike. 91, knee high. Tough pitch to do anything with. Looks like a little more muster than that even. Here's the 1-2 from Moore. That's an inside-out swing by West on that splitter. Splitter's causing some trouble, isn't it, for the Florida State batters? It's oh. one of those pitches where you waste it. What can you do except waste that pitch? That's all you can do. See that number 19 patch that Evan Moore is wearing? That was Wells Crowther's number when he was a men's lacrosse player here at Boston College. Eagles baseball hosting their red bandana weekend in honor of Wells. That's out to left center for Leary, who is underneath, and he makes the catch. So the lacrosse team, usually someone wears the number 19. For a bunch of the other teams that host red bandana games and weekends, they'll have that patch for the number 19 in honor of Wells Crowther again. The man in the red bandana credited with saving more than a dozen lives on September 11, 2001 before losing his own in the South Tower. And that number 19 patch is given to a student athlete who best displays the attributes of Wells Crowther. That is a foul ball. Many folks know the story of Evan Moore, who missed time back in 2021 as he battled cancer, has come back from that. It's a pretty amazing story. Missed all of 2021, worked his way back in 2022 and 2023, but really here this year is pitching real meaningful high leverage spots, especially as you just saw there. And now deals with a Cal Fisher, and a breaking ball is called a strike. Just incredible. I mean, and now, like you said, getting some real heavy workloads, coming in in big situations, and it's a great story. Here's the 0-2. On the ground, left side, tough play, McNulty. Can he make the throw? No, that's Fisher beating it out. Good try by Sam, but an infield hit for Cal Fisher. And a runner on first base with two outs. Yeah, Moore gave him the wave of approval there, like great effort, and it was. Look at this deep in the hole. Makes that throw from shallow left just a little late. And you know the throw is late too at first base, right? Come off the bag, knock it down, make sure it doesn't get behind you. Well done here. Todd Interdonato is coming out and talking with the home plate umpire, Craig Barron as Max Williams, the leadoff man, will come out. Two outs here in the sixth inning. So Williams now, who is 0 for 3 in the game. Five three, Florida State the lead. Moore, that one missed and it's off the glove of Landwehr, up and away. Might have been a half cross up there, may have just ended up too far out. So, Fisher takes second. I think you might be right there with the cross up, Eric. It looked like Landwehr wasn't expecting that hot, but it was up and out of the zone a bit. Take and a look, and he wanted it low when it came up high. That was the uh, big issue there, yeah. We mentioned how cold it is today. Tough to pick up the ball, and get your feel on some of those pitches. Saw Arnold miss one or two on the other side as well. It's a fastball, missed down and away, two and nothing. Yeah, we have seen a couple skip away to the backstop, but that was the first one that was costly on the day where a runner advanced because of it. Does officially go down as a pass ball as it hit the mitt. Two out of Williams. And he goes after it and fouls it back. First of three this weekend between Boston College and Florida State. Again, the game times moved up the next two days as well. We'll have 12 o'clock starts both tomorrow and Sunday. Have them both for you right here on ACC Network Extra. 
Up and away, three balls and one strike. We are dodging storm systems here in the Northeast <laughs> this week. And uh, of course, as always happens, uh, Monday looks absolutely perfect. Oh yes, of course. Well, Florida State knows a lot about those, those pop-up rainstorms That's down right. south. Those are always fun. That is outside ball four, so first and second. Obviously, you know, we've talked about the one play, but one thing that has happened here is that West and Fisher have gotten on base today for Florida State. Fisher a hit by pitch and a single. West singled, and what that's done is it's allowed the order to kind of wrap around, and Cam Smith once again is at the plate here with a couple of runners on base. Third time in a row for Smith with at least a runner on, and he takes a strike. Right. Fisher's doing his job, right? Flipping the lineup over, getting on base, and then Williams, as the leadoff hitter, doing his job, you mentioned. Get on base, and Smith and Tibbs are behind you. Breaking ball stayed inside. 5-3 Seminoles as we play here in the top of the sixth inning. Swing and miss over top of a breaking ball. 78, high and tight, broke in late. Take a look at this one. It's up in the zone, yes, but that late break is tough as Smith swings through that. Line foul off the top of the netting off to the right side. Then you go same spot with 91 heat, and Smith just fouls it off, was late on it, but able to get a piece of it and stay alive. I like what Moore's doing here. One, two. And a breaking ball missed down giving them all different looks, right? Keep those eyes moving, going belt high, ankle high, letter high, everywhere here on Smith. Keep on his toes. Too far inside, so it's a three and two count to Smith. Once again with Tibbs waiting on deck for the Knolls. We'll have some movement here on the base paths. And all of these at bats, by the way, with two outs. And we've been talking about with Smith. Runners off, pitches up and away. And they're loaded again. So back to back walks. Number 22. James Tibbs third. And James Tibbs will bat now with the bases loaded. Talk about big moments in the game. Again here. To put him. And Todd Interdonato. Todd Interdonato. Walked his last time. That missed outside, one ball and no strikes. It's just off the outer half to Tibbs. Try and get him outside there, he likes to pull the ball. So for the third at bat in a row, third plate appearance in a row I should say, Tibbs is up in the count two and all. Swung on 3-0 and in the third, grounded out, and then walked his last time on four pitches. That's a strike and a throw back to third. Check on the runner, Fisher. Fisher was alert to the trouble there. <laughs> Landwehr paused for a quick second, thinking he might get Fisher to maybe take a second step off, but Fisher able to get back. Line foul, and the count is two and two. Fight back from Moore there. Pounds the outside corner, looking to strike, and gets him swinging out of pitch on the outside corner. Tibbs is hitting 600 with the bases loaded this year. 2-2, Two -two. breaking ball, fisted. Nobody's there in the shift, and it drops in. 
Fisher scores, throw goes to third. It's not in time for Smith. And Tibbs brings home two. And the Seminoles lead seven to three. It's off the hands, it's just a bloop. It's a very shallow left. And you said it, the shift, Eric, nobody's there, right? And we'll take a look, there you see it. Three infielders on the right side, and this is just plopped into an empty space by Tibbs, and that'll score a couple runs here as we will see a pitching change here for the Eagles. Trying to find one out here at the end of an inning. Boston College's offense back to the plate. Dealing with Ferrer, who seems like he's always been up in big spots today. And he takes a strike. Ferrer homered in the fourth and then hit that ground ball back to the mound. That led to the throwing error that brought in two runs for Florida State. That's a breaking ball in for a strike. Yeah, he said a two for five with runners in scoring position, five for 11 with two outs. That is a key for success, three for 11 with runners on, and the leadoff batters three for six, getting on base here. Oh, two. Oh, Missed down and away, one ball and two strikes. They gotta limit the damage here, first and third still. For the four hitter. Seven runs on seven hits today for Florida State. Come on, seven. Here we go, kid. Let's go, kid. The 2-2. Two -two. Sliders oh, foul back. Oh, oh, Let's go, kid. Two strike hitting, too, right, for Florida State. I mean, finding a way to put the ball in play with two out, with two strikes, two outs, no matter what it is. And Keep creating chances to score. And they've walked five times. Have a hit batsman today. Getting on base these last couple innings especially. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball hit high and deep to left. Macpock turns, and that is gone. Jaime Ferrer with his second home run of the game and his 11th of the season. And the Knowles have broken it open here in the sixth. Well, Eric, we said his first home run was hit right on the screws. I mean, this one was absolutely crushed to left center field. And we said it, two strike hitting. This is a home run on two strikes, and this is drilled out to left center. He knew it right away. That ball is well over the 375 sign. A big, big hit to break this one open. A 10-3 lead now for the Seminoles. It's another two-out hit. It's more two-out runs for Florida State. Since Ferrer's solo homer in the fourth, the next nine runs, oh my, have been with two outs, and that is way up and in on the first pitch to Marco Dinges. Take a look here, this fastball rides in tight. And it skipped off something, I guess it must have been I think a glove. Landwehr's Landwehr's glove, yeah. Up, right off there. Landwehr went over and chatted too, and looked like they exchanged okay with one another. Let them know, hey, that wasn't anywhere near. <laughs> Intentional. Foul. We talked about feeding off, right? When you build off a second opportunity, this was the two RBI single after to make it 5 3. Line drive to right, that is in. In front of Cam Carraher. So Dinges has hits in each of his last two at bats. That is four hits for Florida State in the inning. 
Pitch on the outer half. Stays with it, drills it down. That right field line, it gets down for a single. And we said it, once the at-bats get going, once the bats get flying around for Florida State, they really get flying, and we have seen that here today. And Todd Interdonato is going to make another pitching change here. So with the lefty Cantu coming up, he's going to go get the lefty Charlie Kuhn. So the third. That's over 500. That's 538 hitting with two outs. This is one of those lefty on lefty matchups here where got to get out of an inning, right? So yeah, it's Cantu. Runner goes from first and the pitch is fouled off. There's a breaking ball from Charlie Kuhn who will use his slider first and then throw the fastball off of it. He pitched in that midweek game at Harvard. Gave up a hit, one earned, walked. Gave up a walk as well. Through 29 pitches in that inning. Ahead of the count, nothing and two. So fourth pitcher of the day for Boston College. <laughs> 29 pitches for Kuhn on Tuesday against Harvard. Cantu just got a piece there. Another slider in at 74. That's a reason why they're such good hitters with two strikes, right? I mean, that's a great pitch, and you foul it off. You just get a piece of it to stay alive, and they make you make the mistake on the mound, Florida State. They'll say, you know, you throw a couple good pitches, you're going to make one mistake, leave one over the plate here. They got the pickoff. Wang throws to second, and that ends the inning. So Dinge is a little over-aggressive, gets... Middle of the order up, though, for Boston College. Here's Kyle Wolf. Need to get going now. Chip away, one run at a time here for the Eagles if they want to get back in this one. And the task obviously made more difficult with Arnold on the mound. It's a long break for Arnold, that half inning there. Put up five runs, a couple pitching changes, so he was probably sitting down for 15, 20 minutes there. See if he can keep it up. Just that one outside, a ball and a strike. We made mention of it a little bit earlier. And again, as a freshman last year, 24 games, he made eight starts, a 634 ERA, struck out 49 and 44 innings. So, you know, certainly not a bad season by any means, but a season that didn't necessarily jump out. But, you know, we talked about it with Link Jarrett, and sometimes you just need more innings and more experience under your belt. And he went to the Cape Cod League and was outstanding. He had a 294 ERA. 21 strikeouts and 18 and a third for Hyannis. An all-star in the Cape. And he's come back this year, and you can see the difference. This is his numbers coming into play today. It's been a massive difference year over year. And in the Cape, you're playing against some of the top talent. Summer ball. Wolf rips it foul down the third base line. And, it, you know, as Link Jarrett said to us this week, he still only... 40 innings, now 45 innings into his sophomore season. He's by no means a finished product yet. Towering fly to right for Tibbs. One away in the sixth inning. Well, if this is not a finished product, if you're in the ACC and not on Florida State, are you worried what a finished, finished product does look like? I mean, what a day he's had here today. Seven strikeouts. And again, still in the bottom of the stick, still looking good, still has velocity behind those pitches. That is down and away to Nick Wang, who singled back in the second inning, was the first of five Boston College hits today against Jamie Arnold. Swing and a miss. Ball and a strike. Still sitting 91 in the sixth, in the cold, after that long layoff. He's been 
93-94 all day. A yeah, fun guy to watch. I mean, a couple of these Florida State batters, pitchers, I mean, you look at them and it's like, okay, these guys are definitely worth coming out and watching a game in the cold. <laughs> Wayne did not swing on appeal. First base umpire, Doug Vines. See his stats for the Cape League there, 294 ERA, 21 strikeouts. Swing and a miss, fastball up. It is eight strikeouts today for Jamie Arnold. But again, you talked about it all day, Eric, and you're 100% right. That arm angle is so tough to pick up, too. On the outer half of the plate, swung through for a strike there. Two away in the bottom half of the sixth here. Pitch. Got missed up and away. His season high in innings is seven, which he threw at Clemson. It's a game where he only had one earned run allowed. And nine strikeouts in seven innings. The game of the Florida State did end up falling nine to eight. Season high in pitches is 102, which he had to start prior against Notre Dame in five and two thirds. He's facing his 23rd batter of the game. He's ahead one and two. And I mean, his location has just been outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. He finds the black of the plate so well. There's a warning given by Craig Barron to one of the coaches that appeared on the Boston College bench. So one ball and two strikes. The count remains. So with the sun trying to peek out a touch here on a Friday afternoon in Brighton. One, two. It's fouled down the right field line and out of play into the Florida State bullpen. Right through, trying to get through six here. Is Arnold. One, two again. And Samini for a second pitch in a row. Keeps the at back going. Good job. Single to start the fourth. Wasting a couple good pitches there again. First on the inner half, he fouls it off. Then on the outer half, he fouls it off. K time. K time. K time. To the backstop at 94. We talked about it last inning, Eric, right? The pass balls today. and. Not a lot costly, just the one that got by that caused the runner to advance, but you gotta think the cold has a lot to do with these balls hitting the backstop, a couple wild throws, and gotta be the weather. That was too high. West tried to frame it, but it was up. And it's a three and two count to Vince Samini. Florida State infielders walking off the field. They thought that was strike three. That is low and inside. So Samini walks. And a two out base runner for Boston College. And here is Adam Magpock. Looks like there is some action starting to get loose in the Seminole bullpen over there down the right field line. Magpock grounds one foul up the first base side. He reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth inning on that excellent play by Cal Fisher at short to get one out at second. And ended up being thrown out at the plate. Arnold looked like he took something off that time and gets the strike and is way ahead, nothing at two. Taking something off his 91, that's pretty good, yeah. huh? Yeah, remember that play from Magpock tried to catch the defense asleep there, but got thrown out by just a step at the plate. Off the glove of West, but no advance. Let's go. 
Yeah, no need to end the inning, getting thrown out. It's second there, I like that. Stay at first, see if you can string some hits. Magpock to right field. Tibbs towards the line, makes the catch and ends the inning. Runner stranded at first. Getting opportunities and Whitaker has 33 strikeouts on the year. Been good for the Seminoles. Remember, Cantu was at the plate when Dinges got picked off, so he leads off in the top of the seventh inning. Sun is starting to pop out here in Brighton, perhaps some sprinkles as well. And a 10 to three Florida State lead here in the seventh inning. Charlie Kuhn still out there, throws strike one. You would have thought we had enough crazy weather this week, but it never stops here. We see the sun, see some rain. Just doesn't make sense in the New England area. If you don't like it, wait five minutes. 1-1, <laughs> one, one. line to left field and in front of Magpock. So Cantu shows a little bit of opposite field power. Goes the other way with a leadoff single here in the seventh. Yeah, it's a good piece of hitting. Sends that the other way, as you said, a little op opposite field. Single and... Eric, we may mention it all day, but when this team gets going, when this Florida State, when their bat really gets swinging, it is tough, and we have seen that. Timely hitting, leadoff hitting. And that is up and away. And by the way, they've you know hit their average now, 15th best offense in the country, nine and a half runs per game. So they've gotten to that with 10 today. Only six of them earned, but they all count the same on the scoreboard. Yes, they do. Faro, the switch hitter, batting right-handed for the first time today. You know, it's a Florida State team, as we mentioned, who got swept by Clemson two weekends ago in the ACC, their first three losses of the season after they were the last unbeaten at 19-0. Two of three last weekend from Louisville, but even in the interim there, as we talked about, because their non-conference schedule, they're playing Florida, so they have two top 10 wins over the Gators, which is why their RPI is as high as it is at number two coming in. That is lined underneath the glove of McNulty. Went past Kuhn first, and then McNulty couldn't get to it. So back-to-back -back hits for Florida State to start the seventh inning, and here is Jackson West. Right back where it came from, this pitch. Over the glove of Kuhn, and then under the glove of McNulty, and short gets through to center field. First and second, no out. Three for six with running and runners in scoring position. Are the Seminoles. Hit 393 on the day now. West singled to start the fifth inning and came around to score. Shows bunt, gets it down. Kuhn goes to first and gets the out there. So sacrifice goes down one to three. Second and third now for Florida State for Cal Fisher. Quickly off the mound was Kuhn, fielded on a hop. Make the throw over to first to get the out that way. And now you're dealing with second and third no out. And we talked about with runners in scoring position, the Eagles have got the job done. And we'll see another pitching change here. Yep, Todd Dernano is going to go get the right-hander. So Levin, Mike Martin for Florida State. So Travis Lane is into the game for Boston College. This pitch is high to Cal Fisher. So Lane, who has just dealt with so many injuries over the course of his career, finally back healthy this year and earning a little bit more of higher leverage roles here for Todd Interdonato, now making his seventh appearance of the season. Again, we told you he threw on Tuesday against Harvard. Came into that game in the third inning after Harvard had scored four runs already with a couple of runners still on base, but he got a double play ball to end the inning. At that time, it was still a 4-4 game. Boston College obviously went on from there and won big. Three balls and no strikes with an open base, and Fisher takes the slider for a strike. Right, you see that on the box score, and you see, okay, pitched two-thirds of an inning, 
in a 17 to nine game. But when you dig deep, you find out that, yeah, that was a big out at the time. Harvard could have took the lead that inning, obviously. 3-1, good slider again. Everything he does is moving away from the hands of the right-handed hitter. Went back to it, and it's popped foul. Got the win in that game at Harvard as well. Someone indeed has to get the win. It is a outdated stat in my opinion, but <laughs> on we go. 3-2 is ball four. So Fisher goes to first base. Bases are loaded. And Max Williams will come to the plate, top of the order. Now batting for the Seminoles, number 18. I guess I say more so now, especially in college baseball, when fewer guys are going five innings. Right, right. So sometimes the win just becomes, it wasn't exactly the case with Travis. He got a really big out in right. that game, as you said. But uh, the win goes to whoever the next pitcher is in sometimes, which right. could just have any impact on a game. Max Williams now. That is hit hard. Diving play, though, by Wang. So Nick Wang gets the out. It does bring a run in. Cantu scores from third. But Wang knocks it down and gets the second out of the inning. So Williams will get an RBI on the play. The Seminoles lead 11 to three. This is a really good play because this is a hot shot ball down the first baseline. I mean, that could have cleared the bases if that gets through. But instead, you get an out and just one run across the plate. Very nice play there. Now the two out hitting becomes a thing. And Smith fouls it back. Now it's Smith up again with two outs. This is his third, fourth, excuse me, consecutive plate appearance, batting with two outs. He's walked twice and doubled. Scored two runs. Runners on second and third. And a breaking ball stays high. Stayed up there and again. That Cole definitely playing in effect. You saw that pitch that over the head of Fisher. Lost it. The grip is so tough when the wind's howling. Smith into right field and deep. Caraher to the wall and he makes the catch. Just enough room to secure it and strand two for Florida State. How he gets ahead of batters as well. Caraher goes after the first pitch. A cue shot to second base and one away. In this bottom of the seventh inning, 11-3 is the Florida State lead. You almost have to jump on that first pitch, right? It could be the best one you're going to see against Arnold. And hit it hard just right at somebody standing at second base there. Over to first and one away. So now Parker Landwehr has had a nice day. He's two for two today. Eagles catcher. Yeah, a couple singles for Landwehr on the day. Scored a run. Two of the five Boston College hits in this game against Arnold. And he is way ahead, nothing in two. When he's been going at his best, he's been getting way ahead. Works quick, too, when he's feeling good. Landwehr to center for Max Williams. Two away here in this seventh inning. Now back for the Eagles. When you're zoned in, you're zoned in. Some action in the pen on the other side. Two guys throwing for Florida State. Looks like Noah Short is throwing in the bullpen. He's the right-hander. I believe that's Connor Holtz on the yep, other side. Connor Holtz also throwing. And time called by Todd Interdonato. Sam McNulty, by the way, has a 14-game hitting streak potentially on the line here. Reached out of fielder's choice and scored a run in the third, but is officially 0 for 2. Tarrington on deck is his first at bat, if you remember. It was Arnold battling back from 3-0 down there. 
to strike him out. And six multi-hit games. So he's got the hit streak going on. Multi-hit games. Nolte's been great in 312 for the Eagles. Flips the lineup over so well. I was talking with Todd before the game, and you know, he talked about, you know, you look at his numbers, and obviously Todd Hernando was not here the last couple of years, but McNulty really didn't get a chance to hit in the fall, but he came back in the spring and so you kind of just look at his swing and it's like it seems like he's better than a 220 hitter here. Just looking at the numbers in his career. And that has been borne out so far this year. Sam, who was really thrust into a role as a freshman with a lot of injuries, having to play every day at short. And then last year, it kind of won the job for himself, got hurt in the first weekend of the season and was out for about a month, and then had to work to earn that job back. One, two. And his line foul back and right. 11-3 lead for Florida State, who is ranked number 14. If they keep playing like this, there's going to be a shrinking gap between where they are in the RPI and where they are in the polls. Arnold goes off speed, gets McNulty to wave through it, and he is through seven innings of strikeouts today. I mean, you said it other than that one pitch, really, where he gives up the home run. I mean, he has been flawless today. And that one pitch that gave Boston College at the time a three to nothing lead. But nine two out runs by Florida State have turned this game. Tibbs hits it a mile high to left for Adam Magpock. A little bit of wind starting to blow out there. And that brings up Jaime Ferrer. What a day it has been for Ferrer in a 3 0 game. Led off the fourth inning with that line drive home run that crawls over the wall. Hard hit ball, and then a pitch that somehow was even lower in the zone. Neither one of those pitch hits were strikes. <laughs> and this one was way out in the sixth inning. That was a three run homer. He's driven in four today. 11 home runs on the season now for Ferrer. And he takes strike one on the breaking ball from Beck Milner. Yeah, that homer in the sixth did not crawl over the wall. That oh. was a moonshot to and, left center. And in, and in fairness, the one in the fourth, I, I should <laughs> I use know. a better word. It, it Just because of the height of the wall, not in terms of the power or oh. velocity was hit on a hit clean the line. baseball with by any means. <laughs> Ball missed somewhere. One ball and two strikes to Ferrer. It's 91 miles an hour again from Milner. Yeah, you and Beck were on the same page. Good stuff. He was walking off the mound like he had a strike out there. To center for Leary. Now two away to start the eighth inning. That's four in a row, retired by Boston College pitching. And here's Marco Dinges. Ninjas is two for three today. A couple RBIs walked as well. It's been a tough out at the plate. Just adding some length and depth to this Florida State order. A huge turnaround from last year. Bunch of new players in year two under Link Jarrett. Firmly putting themselves back on top of the national picture. And in the ACC as well. You don't even have to watch all that much to know how good this team is. I mean, you watch an inning or two, and you realize they got some guys with pop. They play the field so well. They hit timely. It's the little things. Foul back and right. There are the numbers year over year from last year. Again, 23 wins a season ago in total. They are already at 24 here in 2024. Most important stat is win percentage, right? But it, be, it it is because of all those stats under it why they have that good win percentage. Milner held his pose for quite a while and then missed outside. I like what we've seen from Milner here, though, attacking the zone. You definitely understand the flashes. Uh, 
he showed the Boston College coaches. Trying to find the right roll. There's a good looking pitch again. One, two, three inning for Beck Milner. And it put 162 batting average against. I mean, there's just so many guys that they have as options out of the bullpen. And it's really been the thing. As much as we talk about the great offense, as much as we talk about Arnold, the difference year over year in this Florida State bullpen has really been the biggest difference between where they were last year and one of the best teams in the country this year. Yeah, we talked about how good their starters have been, right? So if you come in and shut it down, and a lot of times only a couple innings of work, right, because of how deep the starters can go, as we see John Collins, the pinch hitter here. His last outing, one inning against Louisville, a couple strikeouts, gave up a hit, but gets the job done again. Breaking ball missed outside, so two balls and one strike to Collins. Nine for 32 at the plate this year for Collins, 281 clip. And he fouls that one back. And like the power that Collins has in his bat, he's dangerous. Coming in from Middlebury. And that is quite an off-speed pitch, 74 miles an hour. And he got Collins out in front. Tenth strikeout by Florida State pitching today. Oh my goodness, what a pitch. On the outside corner, a lot off it, as you said. Great looking pitch, and again, much like Arnold, this time from the right side, that arm angle so tough to pick up. He's a bit lower than Arnold even, who was almost a full side arm. Here you see from short, almost submarine, he goes down so low. And Leary takes that same slider, but it was too far inside. So Leary, the big hit of the day for Boston College with the home run to make it 3-0 Eagles. As you said, there was the error in the inning. So it ended up going down as just two of the three runs earned. But again, as we told you, Arnold had only allowed three earned runs the whole season before this game. <laughs> So Boston College managed to get nearly his entire total of runs, but still an impressive performance from Arnold, whose season ERA, by the way, ticked way up to 0.94. <laughs> That's a fastball that missed inside. Just a terrible outing, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. So say your, outing go, your ERA goes up and it's still sub one. And it's we're not in February, you know. We're in early April. It's not his second, third start of the season. So what an impressive start to this year. And as he continues on at the ACC play, expect to see a lot of good things from Arnold. Another walk for Larry and the ACC leader in that category. Been on base twice today. He's been on base in every game this year. See why he works at bat so well. He fouls off the bad pitches and he gets a pit, pitch in the strike zone. He does exactly what he did today. He drills it out to left center field. He hits the ball hard somewhere. So now Kyle Wolf, designated hitter, takes a breaking ball for a strike. And off speed at 74. So tough. See Wolf 0 for 3 on the day. A couple flyouts and a strikeout. Always a threat for the deep ball though, Eric. Well, he's really taking that sophomore jump. Feels very similar to the jump that Joe Vitrano took. Obviously makes sense making that comparison as Wolf is replacing Vitrano in the lineup at first base for the most part this year. Slider on an 0-2, Wolf went to get it. Pops it up to the right side for out number two. Said it, Wolf went to get it. Wolf went to get it there and pop up in the infield. It's so impressive that Short can hit the zone so much from that arm angle. It's always fun to see no matter what level you're watching, college, the MLB, that these pitchers who throw these submarine sidearms can hit their spots so perfectly. I would try it every once in a while in club baseball, Eric, and I hit a couple Duck. batters. You just never know where it's going to go. <laughs> Nick Wang is one for three today. <laughs> a 
And a slider missed down and away. Short, who was one of the best prospects out of the state of West Virginia, fifth overall ranked player, went to Moorhead State as a freshman in 2019 before transferring into West Virginia, playing four years there before eligible for another season. He redshirted at Moorhead State, did not pitch in that 2019 year, so that's why he got the one year back and then the COVID year as well. Is the strike. And the count is two and two. I mean, you're going 88 fastball, right? And then you're touching 74 slider. I mean, oh my goodness. That change up on your eyes, on your on your swing, it's so tough. Breaking ball is out to left. Ferrer is back. It's over his head and off the fence. Leary around third base. The throw to the plate from Ferrer is not in time. It's an RBI double for Nick Wang. And Boston College is back on the board at 11 to four. What a good piece of hitting here, right? You sit back, you wait on it, and you drive it. Take a look at this swing. Oh, picture perfect. One hops the wall in left center. And it was a really good cutoff play. My apologies, hit the wall on a fly there. And the cutoff is done really well. They nearly get the play at the plate here but just in time on the slide. 32nd RBI of the season for Nick Wang. Tied with Leary now for second on the team, one behind Kyle Wolf. Samini now, one for two with a walk today. And the one out he recorded, remember, was that line drive right back to the mound. Short way ahead on Samini, nothing to do. Went to the slider, popped up. Foul ground to the right side for Daniel Cantu, and he ends. See some more time in the top of the ninth here against the Seminoles. They're up 11 to four, a big fifth and sixth. Really put Boston College in a tough spot after having that three nothing lead. And that one missed up and away to Daniel Cantu, the first baseman who's one for four in the game. He singled and scored a run in the seventh. It was 11 unanswered runs for Florida State from the fourth through the seventh inning. After the Eagles got three in the third and then just added that run a moment ago in the eighth. Two pops it up to the left side. Long run, Sam McNulty is out. Oh my, what a play. Sam McNulty went a long way for that baseball. You are not kidding. And with the wind picking up here, spinning that ball around, McNulty able to find that and make one heck of a play there to come up with that. That is a tough play, trying to track that thing down. And a good job back. by Magpock, by the way, to get out of the way. So that was pretty deep, as you said, just because I think the wind, as much as anything, changed where that ball was going to be. And at that point, McNulty had kind of already committed to it. One ball and no strikes to count to Drew Ferro. Yeah, that's one if Magpock tries to call you off that late. That's when you get into trouble and it hits the ground. Farrell rips this to right center field. Leary gives it a look, but that is gone. Fourth home run of the season for Drew Farrell, and Florida State adds another here in the ninth, 12 to four. This is just a great piece of hitting. This ball is smoked to right center. You knew off the bat that that thing was gone. I mean, what a swing this is. Take a look here. Oh boy, that ball is absolutely crushed to right center. So here is Jackson West. And he takes a strike. Boston College has the overshift on. That's why you saw West look to bunt. 
and skips in. Yeah, see, a lot of MLB players do that in the past. They see the shift on, and you just try and bunt one down the third baseline and steal a single here. Robinson Cano got a double. Uh -oh, can't say that up here in this area, right, Eric? That's uh, that's trouble. <laughs> it's been a long time, right? <laughs> it's been a long one, time. One is a little bit up and away. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, obviously, situation's a little bit different here, right? 12-4 game. Uh, it is interesting that how the numbers and, and folks would tell you, well, it's still actually not worth doing that because if you have a chance to be a home run hitter, whatever the case may be, is that as a line out. Ends up being caught by Samini, the third baseman there. Then you should still go for that rather yeah. than. But you would you would almost think it should happen more than it does. Right, right. You would think that's something you, you work on then, right? If you know the shift is coming against you, if you can lay one down that line. But I, I do understand the other side too, right? If you're a home run hitter, uh, are you, is the defense okay settling for that? I'm not too sure, but analytics now is such a big part of the game. Cal Fisher now, the shortstop, swings through a fastball from Lombardi. Top of the ninth inning, 12-4, Florida State leads Boston College. Fisher's been on base three times today. Exactly what you want from your nine hitter. It's in for a strike and the count nothing and two. And again, when you have an order with the depth of this and West who had a good sacrifice spun and got on base. Fisher, who's been on base three times. And it felt like each time there was that high leverage spot for Florida State, it was their best hitters who were at the plate in those moments. To short for McNulty. Brad Lombardi gets through the ninth. The home run by Farrell. 16.3 strikeouts per nine which will get you on the radar. He's got 10 this year and six and a third, so he's still doing it. <laughs> and a breaking ball starts Mac Pock with the strike. Florida State has struck out 10 today as a team. This is no surprise to see. They are first in the ACC and second nationally coming in, averaging 12.7 strikeouts per nine. So they're actually below their season average today. As we've talked about with this Seminoles team, fifth best average in the country, and seventh best earned run average. And today the big difference is the two out hitting, right? One team seven for 16, the other team is two for nine. That is in for strike three on the outside corner. So Magpock is down on strikes. One away for Caraher. Just good control, right? Good off-speed pitch, and might be an inch outside, but it is knee high as he gets the call for the third strikeout looking now of the day. Eric. Hit the spot, though. That he did. And again, one of the things that stands out amongst all of these kind of new pieces in the Florida State bullpen this year is there's a lot of lefties, and of those lefties, it's a lot of guys like this who have good off-speed stuff, can get a strikeout, but from where they throw, from way outside on that arm slot, it's very similar to Arnold. It's very difficult to pick up. Carraher goes the other way with this, and it's tracked down and left by Ferrer. So two away in the ninth for Parker Landwehr. Nice play out there and left by Ferrer. I mean, he's had a heck of a day, huh? Couple homers. And this is a tougher play than it looks like, because that. So Landwehr two for three today, with two outs in the ninth. And he takes strike one. Just a lot of first pitch strikes too, all day long by Florida State. 100%. And it, so difficult on a batter, because a lot of times the first pitch you see is, if it is a strike, it might be the best one you see, right? And now you're behind searching. Up and away, one ball and one strike. Again, remember, tomorrow, it's game time has been moved up to 12 o'clock is their scheduled first pitch. Whitaker and West, the Probables, 12 o'clock Sunday as well. There's the 1-1. One, one. Tap foul. And one ball, two strike count to Parker Landwehr. Holtz looking to end this thing with an exclamation here. 
good crowd for Florida State here up in the mass area. They got their layers out of the closet. <laughs> One ball and two strikes with two outs. And that was too far out. Just tried to beat him outside. This ball off the plate. We talked about how much we've seen that today. And obviously the weather playing a part, the cold, tough to grip. A lot of balls to the backstop, but not a lot of caused any problems. 2-2 two -two. is hit in the air to right. Chasing Tibbs back to the warning track. He makes the catch. And Florida State wins game number 25 of the season.